Welcome to this presentation on wearable photoplethysmography, current status and future challenges. And you should note this presentation focuses on what I think is an exciting article published in Physiological Measurement titled the 2023 Wearable Photoplethysmography Roadmap. And please note, I'm on the editorial board for this journal and my conference fee was paid for by the publisher for which I'm grateful. Photoplethysmography entered clinical use in the 1980s in the form of pulse oximeters, revolutionizing blood oxygen saturation measurement in intensive care units. In the 2010s, two things changed. First, there was a growing recognition that the photoplethysmogram signal contains a wealth of physiological information far beyond heart rate and oxygen saturation. And second, wearable devices equipped with photoplethysmography sensors entered the, the consumer market and people started wearing them, lots of people. This provides the opportunity to potentially monitor health and fitness in daily life across a wide sector of society. But how do we make the most of this opportunity? How do we make the most of wearable photoplethysmography? To introduce myself, my name's Peter Charlton, and I'm a biomedical engineer specialising in signal processing for wearables. I started my career on an intensive care unit in London, looking into using wearables to monitor acutely ill patients. Now, I focus on using wearables in daily life, in the hope that by the time this little lab grows up, there'll be a powerful tool to help maintain health and fitness. Being keen to understand how I can contribute to making this a reality, I've recently been working with 50 leading researchers from around the world on the 2023 Wearable Photoplethysmography Roadmap, a document outlining the path to make the most of wearable photoplethysmography. In this presentation, I'll give a brief introduction to wearable photoplethysmography, I'll summarise the findings of the roadmap, and I'll highlight a few opportunities to get involved in this area of work. So first, a brief introduction to wearable photoplethysmography. The photoplethysmogram, or PPG, is widely measured by wearables such as fitness trackers, smartwatches and smart rings. It exhibits a pulse wave for each heartbeat, and so is used to monitor heart rate. It can also be used to provide insights into heart rhythm, as the beat-to-beat -beat intervals can be used to distinguish between a normal, regular rhythm and an abnormal, irregular rhythm. The shape of individual pulse waves contains information on the heart and blood vessels, with marked differences between young and elderly subjects. There are also slower fluctuations, which can be used to monitor breathing. Of course, there are great challenges to analysing the PPG, including handling motion artefact. The use of photoplethysmography in wearables presents opportunities to monitor health in daily life, including identifying atrial fibrillation, an arrhythmia which increases the risk of stroke, assessing blood pressure and vascular health, and monitoring breathing, a key marker of clinical deterioration. So next, the findings of the roadmap. The aim was to provide key directions for research and development to realise the full potential of wearable photoplethysmography. 51 experts provided their perspectives on 24 key topics across four areas, which I'll now describe. Firstly, in the area of sensor design, innovative designs have been developed including flexible tattoo sensors, in-ear sensors and multi-wavelength photoplethysmography sensors. Photoplethysmography signal processing continues to advance, focusing on accurately extracting physiological information from the signal, as shown in the pulse wave analysis below, handling motion artefact, as shown on the right, and using the signal for applications such as blood pressure, respiratory, and sleep monitoring. 
Several potential applications of wearable photoplethysmography are described in the roadmap. From relatively mature applications, such as the detection of atrial fibrillation, to novel applications, such as mental health assessment. Key research directions include designing device validation protocols, identifying sources of inaccuracy, and investigating alternative sensing technologies. In addition to the insights provided in each of these areas, it's also helpful to consider the themes which emerge across the roadmap as a whole. The functionality of wearable photoplethysmography devices is expanding with the ability to monitor novel parameters such as blood pressure, oxygen saturation and even detailed respiratory metrics. Key sensor design decisions include the anatomical site of the sensor, the geometry of sensor components, the light sources and detectors and the wavelengths of light used. A wide range of PPG signal processing techniques have been proposed, and it's not yet clear which perform best, particularly across different applications. New applications for wearable photoplethysmography are being identified, aided by the expanding functionality of the technology. Mental health assessment is just one example. And finally, using wearable photoplethysmography devices to their full potential will require the trust of multiple stakeholders, including clinicians, policy makers, and most importantly, device users. Several challenges and solutions also emerge from the roadmap. First is PPG signal quality. The PPG is highly susceptible to noise. Approaches to handle noise range from optimizing sensor design to developing signal processing techniques to identify low quality periods and to recover noise-free signals. Second, the development of signal processing algorithms is greatly aided by open datasets and code. Wearable devices which provide raw PPG signals now provide the opportunity to acquire such datasets in daily life. Third, agreed device validation protocols are being developed to provide a comprehensive understanding of the real-world performance of devices. Fourth, several potential sources of inaccuracy in wearable photoplethysmography devices have been identified. Work is ongoing to identify further sources and to mitigate against them. Next, it's important to be mindful of the equity of access to devices and to their performance. Key considerations are the cost of devices, and their performance in subjects with different characteristics, such as skin type. And finally, best practices could be established across several areas, including sensor design, signal quality assessment, and signal processing algorithms. Now, a few reflections on coordinating this article. This was a relatively new article type to me. A roadmap allows different authors to contribute their own sections, and so the process of putting it together is slightly different to a typical review article where the writing needs to flow continuously. Coordinating this article helped me deepen my understanding of the topic and initiate communication with subject experts, both of which I think were highly beneficial to me. I am um, instigated an internal peer review process, which I think was uh, beneficial to improving the article, and I'd recommend this approach. And finally, I should note that um, my role as coordinator has inevitably introduced bias to the article. Firstly, as shown by the countries with which authors were affiliated, shown here in red, I note there are no authors from either South America or Africa. And secondly, bias in the content. So for instance, we did not cover one particularly exciting development, which is the use of wearable photoplethysmography devices to conduct large-scale studies. The largest I'm aware of is a study of Fitbit data from 8 million individuals. In addition, large interventional studies have been conducted in the area of atrial fibrillation detection. I think this is a promising route for the future.
So just some opportunities for you to potentially get involved in this area of work. First, we're running a focus collection on the topic of open source and validated computational tools for physiological time series analysis. If, like me, you're interested in developing algorithms which can be used in the real world and understanding how best to assess their performance to validate them, then this might be a, a good opportunity for you to share your work and help shape the field's view on this topic. Second, we've recently released a new toolbox for PPG analysis called PyPPG, and this might be of interest in your work. And third, I'm hoping to establish a network to collaborate on research into wearables. If this is of interest, do contact me. So with that, I'd like to thank my colleagues and the institutions and funders who have supported this work. And most of all, to thank the 50 co-authors of the 2023 Wearable Photoplethysmography Roadmap, who've been a joy to work with. And conclude by saying, wearable photoplethysmography has potential to provide a wealth of physiological information with numerous applications in health, fitness and well-being. However, there's much work to be done to realise the full potential of wearable photoplethysmography. The 2023 Wearable Photoplethysmography Roadmap provides valuable directions for future work to help guide future research and development in the field. Here's the link to the uh, publication, the link to the slides below, and my email address. I'd always welcome people getting in touch. Thanks for listening. <laughs>